The world's largest climate summit begins today in Dubai, and it comes as 2023 is set to be the hottest year ever recorded on this planet. This year, the United States broke records in oil and gas production, thanks in part to Biden administration policies. President Biden is not set to attend the summit and amid some criticism as has instead chosen to send Vice President Kamala Harris on his behalf to, quote, showcase U.S. global leadership on climate at home and abroad. So Valerie Volkovici is joining us now. She covers U.S. climate and energy policy for Reuters News Agency. Thanks for joining us. So let's just very quickly touch on the fact that the president is not going to be attending the summit. There's a lot going on in the world. Um, but uh, can we speak a little bit to the messaging of sending the vice president, if it is, you know, that big of a deal or not? Sure. Well, I think, you know, speaking from here, from the summit, I think it maybe doesn't have as big as an impact as it might domestically. Uh, John Kerry, who's a special envoy on climate change, is a widely recognized figure here. I think he reports directly to the president, and and I know that uh, his counterparts know that know that he has presidents here. So I'm not sure the the impact is felt as much here as it might be domestically, especially among younger voters who might be questioning the president's commitment on climate issues. Um, so of course. There's going to be controversy, but this time around, there's sort of another layer to the controversy. Um, obviously, at the center of this debate about climate change is our use of fossil fuels. It is happening in a country that is heavily dependent on fossil fuels. Not just that, the summit president is also the CEO of an oil company. Uh, people must be talking. It is the talk of this summit. It is the theme. And uh the president of the COP, Sultan Al-Jaber, kind of addressed it head on today in his opening remarks. He called on, you know, he, he called for uh, countries, for environmentalists and fossil fuel companies to work together toward a common goal. Uh, he's come under criticism because recent documents revealed that uh, his company, that the UAE has been trying to use the summit to kind of cut deals with different country oil and gas deals. And that, of course, underscored fears that that certainly a lot of people had that you know about an uh, an oil country hosting the cop. So it's definitely a central theme here, and um, he is kind of addressing it head on. And will be interesting to see because the question of how to phase out fossil fuels, how quickly with what technology is going to be at the center uh, of the debates here. Yeah, and quickly before we let you go, I want to talk about something else that I think is really interesting that, they'll, that they will be discussing, which is the development of a fund to help countries who have been impacted by climate change but are not primarily the reasons why we're seeing sort of sure. this climate problem. Can you talk about where that conversation is right now? Well, it's kind of interesting. So I just arrived this morning and what, you know, what we've been reporting and what we're hearing in the plenary is that uh, we're going to get a deal on this loss and damage fund, uh, uh, what you were describing, kind of straight away in the summit. And we'll hear some financial contributions from a couple of countries in the order of a couple of hundred million. So I know that this is something that the organizers at certain countries hope will set a positive tone for the conference. Uh, and and um, as one uh, negotiator said, they hope it will build trust uh, among all countries and um, especially amid this controversy over fossil fuels. So it's interesting to start the summit with a bit of good news. So we'll see how that affects the overall tone. Yeah, exactly. I hope this is a, a sign of things to come for the rest of the summit. Uh, Valerie Volkovici, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you.